Welcome to the beautiful day on the Abonito Show. I am your host, Dorimar Bonilla, and today I have the pleasure to welcome to our show Mr. Isidro Garza. He is from the organization League of United Latin American Citizens, or LULAC. Welcome, Mr. Isidro. Ms. Dorimar, qué bonita es usted. Oh, gracias. It's an honor to be here with you. It's a pleasure to have you here. The honor is absolutely mine. You're such an icon in the Houston community. Please tell me a little bit about your background for our audience to know. Well, uh, Ms. Dorimar, uh, I'm a farm worker. I, I come from, we picked the crop. Uh, and uh, we had the opportunity to uh, get an education. Uh, my family, is, uh, I'm one of nine. We were born in the border uh, in Texas. Um, uh, and our family has been here uh, it, by a, a, a marker in a cemetery since uh, 70, 60, 1763, before Texas was Texas. Wow. Uh, and uh, I went to school at Texas a and I'm a mechanical engineer. Uh, I have three sons and a, a wife that we're going to have uh, 50 years anniversary in January. This Congratulations. January. Yeah, so That's wonderful. I'm blessed. And I, my mom is still living. She's 92. Wow. Uh, and uh, uh, we're just blessed. A blessed family, a blessed family. And you, your work with LULAC, LULAC does so much for the Latin community. And it, it, it has so much history in Texas. And you were man of the year in 2017 with LULAC. What was that recognition like? And what does it mean to you? Well, uh, a recognition, first of all, uh, anything that, that I have been able to do for the organization or for the community, it's only because of the mercy and grace of our Heavenly Father uh, that, that He um, allows me uh, uh, to be active in the community uh, on issues that are important. Uh, and, and so when that recognition uh, was given, uh, uh, the, uh, I am the least worthy of the recognition and there's so many people throughout the country uh, that every day, uh, today inclusive, they're out there doing things, trying to make life a little bit better for the community, not just the Hispanic community, but in particular from the Hispanic community. Uh, so I received that honor, uh, not myself, but on, for and on behalf of all the Lulakers throughout this country that are constantly working at keeping up the mission of, of our organization. Well, you are a very humble man, but that award was very well deserved. So congratulations on that. And um, I want you to tell me a little bit more about LULAC. How, how did it come to be? Uh, in uh, 1929, well, actually years before that, about 10 years before that, there were different groups that realized that uh, the, the rights uh, spelled out here in the Constitution, this is the Constitution of the United States, uh, and uh, and that many of the rights were being denied uh, for Hispanics uh, uh, and uh, in all areas. Uh, and so they, they got together, a group of different organizations, and they, they discussed for almost 10 years uh, how to uh, structure yeah, and as a Latin community, we have come a long way. LULAC has been essential to this growth that we have had and the progress that we have had. Can you please share with me some of the milestones of the organization? Uh, sure. Uh, well, originally, uh, the first, uh, uh, in 1930, remember, it was formed in 1929, 1930, there was a lawsuit filed uh, 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 Salvatierra uh, uh, versus Del Rio Independent School District, and it had to do with, with uh, schools being segregated. Uh, there's school for Hispanics and a school for Anglos. Wow. Uh, and uh, eventually, uh, uh, obviously, the Supreme Court ruled on it, uh, and uh, it, it ruled that uh, that was discriminatory. Uh, that was against this great constitution in the United States. Uh, so, uh, this constitution is LULAX. And it starts from the very start, uh, honoring our Heavenly Father. Uh, that's the preamble. And then it goes into the mission. We don't call it mission. We call it aims and purposes. What are those aims and purposes? Uh, they're, they're enumerated. They're, uh, there are 10 different uh, 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 re reasons why it was 
But I'd like to just quote directly from the book on just one of them, which is the 10th one, uh, because uh, it, this uh, more answers your question. Uh, uh, and, and, and it starts out by saying, based on the spirit of the philosophy of our league and having uh, un, uh, equal, unequaled faith in its righteousness, we propose to undergrid the efforts postulated in our aims and purposes with the overall objective of creating among our fellow citizens through example and a mutual exchange of concepts an understanding and recognition of and an appreciation for the dignity, worth, and potential of the individual. And it is when the dignity of someone is not being respected by some. And it's so important. Absolutely. Uh, it's key. It's key in somebody's life for somebody to be in this world, to be recognized as an individual and respected for who they are as equal as everyone else around them. That's basic needs of a human. And not only do you establish what the key points should be, but you also move people around to get engaged in, in to all of these goals. And you have helped organize this is at Chavez March for many years, drawing more than 40,000 people. This is an incredible effort. Why is this march so important? Uh, Cesar Chavez, and I, I brought some gifts for, for each one of you. Uh, I brought a, a, a flag. Uh, of the of Cesar Chavez. Uh, Thank you. Uh, and in the, at the center of the Cesar Chavez flag is is a is, is an eagle. Uh, the eagle that signifies dignity. So when we talk about Cesar Chavez, uh, some people would like to say, well, he was a guy who worked with the unions. He's a guy that was working no us and boycott. Well, he did that. But why did he do it? He did it because people like myself, that were out in the fields with our family, our mothers and our sisters picking the crop. When they had to go use the restroom, there were no restrooms. They would have to go find a place uh, and, and, uh, to, to take care of their, their needs. Uh, and, and how do you think that made me feel as the man in charge of that family out there in the field? And it's something that will never be forgotten. Cesar Chavez said, that's not right. There was no clean water. The surcos or the, the uh, rows where the crops, you couldn't see the end, they'd go for miles. And there was no water. And then when you did get to the water, the water was hot and, and one big bucket and everyone just stuck their hand in there and drank. Uh, so what was Cesar Chavez working for? He was working for the to protect the dignity of my mom and my sisters and, and mine as, as we had to go through that just to make a decent living and working for, and at that time, the wages were very low and he's always dedicated a lot of his time to make sure that all men and women, men and women, uh, get respectable living wages and we continue on that flight. Thank you so much for all the work that you do with the community. And thank you for joining me today and us here at the beautiful Day on the Bonito Show. It's been an absolute pleasure having you. Felicidades on, the, on your new project. It's a tremendous project and uh, God has his hand over it and it will oh. go, do well for many people. Thank you, that means so much. And thank you all of you for watching the beautiful Day on the Bonito Show. I am your host, Dorimar Bonilla. I hope you enjoy and learn something today. Hello, welcome back to the beautiful Day on Dia Bonito show. I am your host, Dorimar Bonilla, and today we have a very special guest, platinum selling artist with an extensive career, one who has placed Latin music in the world map with some of his biggest hits, and also my former dance partner from the Latin Dancing with the Stars, directly from Orocovis, Puerto Rico, Manny Manuel. Hello. Thank you, thank you for that presentation, I appreciate it. And thank you for um, inviting me in this um, beautiful program and a beautiful day here in the United States and uh, speak some English. So I love to practice English, that's great. Yes, yes, I do know this about Manny, he loves to practice his English. Yeah. Manny, would you share with our viewers some of your background? Okay, my background starting um, 
we were born in uh, born in Orokovis, Puerto Rico. You already tell tell them. Um, I I born at home, but uh, the the lady the assistant. My a mother, midwife. You had a midwife. Uh, that's the word. A yes. Midwife. Yes. Yes. I, I'm born in, at home, and uh, that's a very old school way. Like in the old days, people yes. used to, in Puerto Rico, this in the mountain, and yeah. a midwife would be traditionally would come to your house instead of going to an actual hospital. That was in 1972. That's, but that's my year. Yes, I mean that's not that far <laughs> back, but in the mountains, yeah, it was a tradition. We, we, we still, we still, we that, still, yeah, yeah, that that kind of um, and uh, a style, no, and uh, but now, but now. Um, the ladies uh, um, decide to, to take their babies with a with a midwife. With midwife. Yeah, now it's out of choice, right? Yes. Now they choose to do it. <laughs> so I'm I'm starting um, my home, my school and uh, at the mountains, all my my high school, and at high school I'm I love to do theater, music, and uh, every every show or talent talent show, talent show at, at school, I was the first in the front of the line to make performance. Then um, we, uh, I'm, we st I, I stood with uh, a guy that his father is he's, he's the owner of the a band named Tempo Merenguero, and he tell her father tell her father that uh, he knows a guy that sings in the high school, and they um, asking me for being part of the of the band. Then then it's gonna be my my first group that I. Um, do a professional performance on the stage, then starting other um, orchestras, other groups like Mayra Salinas being part of the chorus, then starting with Los Sabrosos del Merengue. Oh yes, and you started with how old were you when you started with Sabrosos del Merengue? Oh, Los Sabrosos are about 18, 19 years old. That I mean, that is insane. You started with Sabrosos del Merengue at such a young age, and you had incredible hits like Fiera Callada, La Chica de Mi Escuela. I remember dancing to all this music. I loved it. I was a huge fan of yours, thank by you. the way. I was a very big fan of <laughs> yours you, growing you. up. And um, did you feel, being so young and, and having such a big success at an early age, did you feel any pressures? You know what? You know what? Uh, I feel like I was in Disney World. It's not kind of a job or a hard work for me. It's been like a like a dream come true. That's that's the the feeling that at that age, and I can I can I, I didn't know about manage money or uh, a band. Uno cuenta bancaria, how you say in English? A bank account. A bank account. Yes. So I'm starting to make money doing what I love, doing music. So it's kind of it's cool. I'm in Disney World. Uh, <laughs> Pretty <money>. memorable, <laughs> yes. So it's, a, it's a very nice um, uh, first years in the, in this this industry. Wow. Well, that's yeah. I can imagine, you know, being so young and, and being successful, and you don't have that many responsibilities, so you can just right enjoy I just life. Enjoy. I just yeah. enjoy. Just enjoy travels. It's the first time with Los Abrazos del Merengue. It's the first time that I am going into the airplane outside Puerto Rico to Dominican Republic. When I arrived Dominican Republic, um, Fiera Callada is the hit, the, mo hey. the, the most, um, most oído, most heard. Most played song, so play, play yes. At the radio stations. And it's a big fan club, men's, women's, little kids waiting for us and the, at the airport. It was a very beautiful experience I never forget in my life. It was a huge hit. It really was. Yes, and it was a hit. after you were with Los Sabrosos del Merengue, you went into your solo career with uh, Rey de Corazones, was your yeah. first album. And only a few weeks after the launch of this album, it became a platinum album. Yes. How was that for you to be, again, still so young, because you were still fairly young when that happened, and to be welcomed and received? in such a way as a solo artist now departing from a group that's the the point the turning point that i that i knew this is my industry this is my my job this is my responsibility at the time that i go, go out on los abrazos del merengue and decide to make my own um, company name it manny manuel i'm the owner of that company about uh, 28 guys on the and a nominee, a nomina? The, yeah, and the payroll. And the payroll. 
and uh, I'm the uh, I'm a heifer, I'm a boss. So that's the way, that's the first time that I that I that I am um, recognize that this is a this is a big responsibility. This is a, a, an empresa, is a, an, an institution, and uh, that's um, it's fun at the same time because I'm doing my first solo album. But at the same time, it's getting responsibility. Now it's getting serious. Because I'm the I'm the only one to make the the show. I'm the only one to not sharing with other guys the, yeah. the performance. So you have to direct your own way. Yes, it's, it's, I just um, have to take the people up, make the people up the the whole shows, the whole interviews, the autograph, the in stores. So it's just me. I'm traveling a lot, a lot of, of countries, all South America, United States, Mexico, Europe, Zurich, Germany, and Italy. Well, yes, as you mentioned, it. you were touring the world. Um, in fact, when your album became so big, you were all over the world. Yeah. And, and in 1996, um, you reached a point in your career where you also started working in collaboration with other artists. Yeah. You had collaborations with Trio Dos Condes, with Rafi Levy, Olga Tañón. Uh, what would you say was one of your most memorable collaborations and why? I have a lot of fissurings and collaborations in my, my career, but Olga Tañón is uh, one of my, not, not my, one of, one of my favorite artists, and, uh, but she's my friend, she's a kind of a sister, like a godmother, and uh, she's uh, one of my dream come true to make a fissure with. Olga is one of my favorite ones. Yes, she's, she's amazing. But every every, every fissure have their magic. Yeah, like, but you like guys were also contemporary within your careers. Yeah. Yes. When you were very big, she was also very big. Time. I mean, you're still both very big, but you kind of came up about the same time. And uh, we uh, we was the the tropical artist, she female, me uh, a male, that visiting the very exclusive um, Centro de Bellas Artes in Santurce is kind of a theater, yes. very exclusive theater that doesn't have tropical music on, on it. And Correct. Olga yes. was the first lady and made a, a first um, male. Male. And that's uh, incredible. Well, well, congratulations, because Thank that you. is a big a milestone in your yes, career. Yes, that's a, that's a big goal. Yes. yes. And your genre goes from merengue to boleros to pop. You have a lot of different yeah, types traveling. of music. I'm traveling different, different um Different sounds, different kind of types, type of music, of like boleros. It's kind of old music with uh, guitars. I do ballads. I am um, merengue, bachata, and salsa. Yes. So <laughs> I'm traveling. What different, were some different of your sounds. influences? What were some some of your musical influences? When I was a little kid, my father and my mother um, s listening all type of music, this merengue or boleros, beautiful boleros beautiful lyrics and uh, my, my our our music um, our uh, native music from from Puerto Rico that's beautiful like plena yes the aguinaldo bomba plena you know and th trova. those influence la trova those influence um, growing me up about knowing and loving the music not, not mine not our music but music from whole the whole world yeah, and on a personal side, over time, you have had some up and downs and a few struggles that have gone pretty public. Yeah. Um, what would you say have been some of your biggest challenges and how have you dealt with them? Life is up and down. This is life, that's why, that's why we, we are here, to learn, to learn and um, having experiences. Some days are bad. Some days are good, but the, the thing is that you learn about that, that experience or that bad moments and uh, no regrets. So just keep going and uh, s um, trying to not um, stop with the same um, stone again. So, learn, yeah, yeah learn. learn from, you know, lessons yes. learned and, and, and try to better yourself. That's why I'm here, because of the bad days and the good days. This is, uh, this is me. They're part of your journey. Yes. Where do you find yourself now in that part of your journey, on that side of your personal life? In myself, in my inside, uh, in, in my honesty 
with uh, with me. I think, uh, and I learned this all of these years that uh, the only person that you have to be honest and you have to be uh, responsible to be sincerely is in you. If you be honest with you, the the way is uh, easier, and uh, and you can live in this world with all of the word that comes with. Wow. So, so inter your life in general, from career, from personal life, is so interesting, and we're so blessed that you get to share it Thank with you. us. Thank you so much for that. Shake your hands off.